I found out that to have rest round about, there are six principal areas, six principal areas where you must make tremendous advancement and you must allow the light and the glory and the power of God to shine in those areas. If any one of those areas um, are short of the light and the wisdom and the grace of God, you can never truly have rest roundabout. Can I run through those areas? Are you ready? Number one, your spiritual growth. The first area where you measure rest that God can grant a man rest is in the area of your spiritual life. The area of your spiritual life. The Bible lets us know that you can make progress spiritually and in order of priority, that is the first biblical platform to measure your progress and to find rest. Everything else will eventually fail in your life if your spiritual life goes wrong. Did you hear what I said? Satan does not mind believers failing in their spiritual lives provided they are blinded and even if they excel in any, any other area, he does not care because eventually your life will be a reflection of your spiritual health. Are we together now? In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, it says, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to him be glory now and forever. He says to grow in grace and to grow in knowledge. That means we can grow. The believer is not supposed to just stop at the gates of salvation and remain stunted and immature. There is an implication when a believer has does not have sufficient growth that comes through knowledge. You will never be able to walk in the fullness of your victory in Christ. For the Bible says an heir, for as long as that heir is a child, it says he differeth not from a slave, even though he be Lord of all. It takes growth. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. Jesus himself increased, the Bible says, in wisdom he increased in stature and he increased in favor with God and with men. We must contend for spiritual growth in order of priority. You will never find rest. You will never truly be able to enter your Sabbath. Remember the Bible speaking about the Sabbath? It said there remained a rest for the people of God. Why didn't they hear his rest? They stepped into his rest. Because when they heard his voice, they did not hearken to it. They trivialized it. They did not mix it with faith. There remained a rest for God's people. Your spiritual progress is very important. You must contend for light this year like never before. You must fight ignorance spiritually. You must, you must contend to know Jesus Christ. The Bible says, John chapter 17 and verse 3, it says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. The administration of eternal life is progressive. That the more you know him, the more the wealth and the riches of eternal life finds expression within you. Are we learning your spiritual growth? Let's hurry up number two. The second area you need to contend for that represents the platform for rest round about is mental transformation. Please write it down. Mental transformation. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Here's what it says. It says, and do not be conformed to this world. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we can change states. We can become greater and superior versions of ourselves. Listen, transformation means sustaining superior belief systems. You must obtain grace from God because the Bible is very clear that as a man thinketh in his heart, interchange for mind, he says so he will be or so he is. You will never rise above and beyond your belief system. Many of us are victims of our thinking as sincere and as well-meaning and even as spiritual as we are. When it has to do with excellence and victory in addition to spirituality, you need to have the mind of Christ. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you, 
which was also in Christ Jesus. There was a paradigm, there was a perspective, there was a, a, a belief system, a way to think that made Jesus to walk in victory. We have all kinds of belief systems that come from our cultures, our, our pasts, our associations, our levels of exposure. All of these factors help to shape our thinking. And it is in the area of mental transformation that both science and religion agree that you will not be able to make any significant progress if your mind is limited. In Genesis 11, the Bible talks about something there, a story of Nimrod Kush that demonstrates the excellency of thinking. Satan is not mentioned there. The Holy Spirit is not mentioned there. Just men and their thoughts. And yet God himself gave a testimony in that story that what they have imagined to do, nothing, God is speaking now, nothing will stop them that they have imagined to do. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So our thinking matters as far as manifesting our results is concerned. Are we together? The major, let me tell you this. Um, what we call, I, I wish I had the time to deal a bit with the subject of warfare. That the major, did you know that the principal battle of the believer is in the realm of the mind? In the realm of the mind. Number three. The third area where you need to find rest and contend for rest this year is in the area of your health and your physical well-being. Don't assume you know what I'm saying. Just pay attention and listen carefully. Your health and your physical well-being. 3 John verse 1, chapter 1 and verse 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things, above all the things that I've told you, above all the things that I have shown you, I wish that you will prosper and that in your prosperity, your health will also be in place. I wish that you may prosper and be in health. Say in the name of Jesus, I will be in health. Do you know why it is important to be healthy? Please look up. The only authorized platform that you have to function in the earth realm is your body. Science has not yet perfected the art of removing a spirit and putting it in another medium to exist. No. If your body deteriorates beyond a certain degree, the spirit will have to leave. There is a requisite level of health mandated for every human spirit to safely coexist with your body. Are we together now? And when Satan wants to administer death, one of the ways he administers death is to deteriorate your body to a point where your spirit can no longer stay and your spirit will have to live in an event called death. This body has to be prepared to host your spirit. A body has thou prepared for me. So no matter how alive you are spiritually, when you lose your body, you have lost everything as far as your function on earth is concerned. It is important. Many people prophesy longevity, but they downplay the very medium that is the principal host. Both your spirit and the Holy Spirit lives in you through your body. The Bible calls your body the temple, not just your spirit. You have a responsibility to stay healthy. And you must obtain grace that like never before, I, I am intentional about living long by staying healthy. Are we together? Your physical well-being is important. How many dreams have been shattered at the instance of certain illnesses and certain bodily conditions? Great dreams. Mighty men and women. Imagine if Jesus was sick all through his 33 years. There would be no salvation. 
it took health to move from place to place preaching imagine if the apostles listen there were many apostles who had potentials but they sadly because they died early like apostle james like stephen the Messiah. only god knows what else he would have written that would be captured in the bible dreams that just went don't just concentrate on your spirit pay attention to your body everything you do that administers death to your body from your eating to carelessness you must obtain grace to drive it far from you as a commitment that you intend to live long number four are you ready the second area where you must excel and find rest is in the area of purpose and destiny please write it down purpose and destiny hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 you must be able to give definition and meaning to your living. Do not allow situations and circumstances to just navigate you through a part of short-term relevance. And then you are now confused, escorting men along the corridors of destiny without having a definition for your life. Here's what the Bible says. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will. Oh God, I'm not here gallivanting around this space called earth. I am here with a definition for my life. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. This was a conversation between the young boy Jeremiah and the Lord himself. And here's what he said. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations. Everyone here by God was born for a reason. And let me tell you something about purpose. Purpose and destiny is like a relay. Someone depends on your living purpose to find his own purpose. So when you, when you do not find your place in life, you not only hurt your own destiny, you stop others who are depending on your own discovery. Imagine if your pastor did not find his place in life and destiny. You see that? Because in this kingdom, it's in his light that we see light. It does not just apply to God alone. Even in your light, others see light. We just read it. That there are people in the room and that room is dark. Depending on the one who brings light. Imagine how many more apostles will rise when you rise. Imagine how many prophets will rise when you rise. Imagine how, how many more entrepreneurs will rise when you rise. When you don't rise and live up to purpose, you don't just rob yourself. You rob the program of God. Purpose and destiny. Finding your place is very important in life. It gives you the legitimacy to say no to many things. Purpose gives you constraints that are healthy. If you do not find your place in life, you do not have a basis to say no. At the end of your life, there are only three things that will matter. Number one, your relationship with Jesus. Number two, your family. Number three, your assignment. Ultimately, these are the three things that sustain the power to give you fulfillment. You must this year know how to, to, um, to arrange your life in a way and a manner that you do not major on minors and then minor on majors. Is God speaking to us? purpose and destiny acts chapter 26 acts chapter 26 let's hurry up from verse 14 we'll read to 19 this was paul making his defense before king agrippa follow carefully as i read and it says he's, he's narrating his experience now when we were all fallen to the earth i had a voice speaking unto me saying in the hebrew tongue Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. 15. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Verse 16. Ready? Let's read together. One to read. But rise and stand upon your feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. 
to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I shall appear unto you. 17. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. May 19 be your verse. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly calling. It's not an earthly calling. I was not disobedient, constrained by the awareness that heaven sent me. This is what I am up and about doing. Is someone learning? You cannot find rest just when you have money or when you have all of these things. One of the indices, psychologically speaking, psychologists tell us that there are about six indices that make for fulfillment. One of it is impact and contribution. You find fulfillment to the degree to which you know your life is counting as far as making impact and contribution is concerned. May this be the year that you don't just clap for people for doing great things for God, but that your life also becomes part of that drink offering. Number five. Are you learning? The fifth area that you must contend to find rest in roundabout is the area of finances. Access to the supplies of heaven. Access to resources. Psalms 35 and verse 27. Very quickly, Psalm 35, 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say, how long? Continually. Let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God desires for us to be blessed. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. It says, ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9. That though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. Don't be ashamed to receive it. You know to what end now. That with that prosperity as a tool, you are not only comfortable, but it gives you the opportunity to reveal Jesus. You may have heard me say it. That the weight of Jesus is heavy. It takes prosperity to lift him. It takes more than just a desire. Next time you sing that song, we lift you high, think of what you are saying. You must have in place all the tools that make for lifting him high. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Very classic scripture on a balanced viewpoint for obtaining and contending for um, the supplies of heaven. And God is able to make all grace, all grace abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things, you use them as tools to abound to every good work. That means you cannot abound to every good work when you have financial deficiencies. Are we together? Now, most people love the idea of money because they hate suffering, which is a very justifiable reason, by the way. But then more than that, you must desire to see Jesus glorified. And it should drive you to uh, personally... I hate the idea of poverty because of its power to limit kingdom come. If poverty were neutral, I would not have a problem with it. But it is not neutral. It can limit you. Books that can bless nations constrained by resources. Children that can be raised to become champions, to be sent to good schools constrained by finances. You have to see the evil in poverty and lack and insufficiency to really want the blessing of the Lord. With all due respect to people who may be struggling financially, it is evil to desire to remain poor. 
it is not just bad it is evil because you are in direct partnership with satan to frustrate the program of god i believe that being glad over poverty don't confuse what i'm saying being happy and being being joyful to remain in poverty is worse than occultism Because one of the principal constraints to the advancement of the gospel, as far as the world of men is concerned, is the availability of financial resources. Hmm. Can you imagine that in our world today, the world is immersed in about, the world is about 70 to 75 percent water, and yet there are people today who don't have water. Yet the whole world that we are, the whole world we are, <laughs> that architect called poverty, that in spite of the fact that the world is surrounded by water, it can channel individuals to an area where they literally will die of thirst. I pray that through my life and your life, God will be able to grant us greater resources in this system in this in this season to do so much for the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ can I tell you this one of the assignments of poverty is delay it was the delay of the bridegroom that made the oil to finish if the bridegroom came early all ten would not have a problem poverty can make time pass and yet the events that should happen in time don't happen. If someone is to write Wayek this year, and because of lack of resources, he writes it five years from now. No, something has happened to him. Listen, the blessing of prosperity is not that it comes, it's that it comes when needed. You have to understand that there is timing to wealth. Wealth can come late. This is a charge. Sit down. Number six. One last word on this prosperity thing I just said. Finance. Please, in the name of Jesus Christ, refuse poverty. You, you, don't feel guilty and don't feel that refusing poverty or, um, embracing prosperity is promoting carnality no that is that is a misguided understanding by ignorant people who are not doing much for the kingdom are we together say unto god how terrible he says um zechariah 1 17 cry yet saying thus saith the lord my cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad and i will comfort zion he gives us the power to prosper. Deuteronomy 8.18 Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee the power to prosper. Do you know what it means to be wealthy? I hope you know that being wealthy and being rich are two different things. Do you know the difference? Listen, to be rich means to have abundant financial resources. That's it. The ultimate measure of riches is the presence of abundant financial resources. But wealth means that you have within your reach the systems that ensure that there is no drought again. The ability to replenish is what translates a man from being rich to being wealthy. You need both of them. If you have the systems alone, your future is safe, but you will suffer now. So you need riches and wealth. Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. It says his seed shall be mighty upon earth. Then it says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. It says wealth and riches. They are not the same, but they are both needed. Shall be in his house. You need abundant financial resources alongside the systems that ensure 
that your wealth becomes a circle. Anything that lasts in this kingdom must be in a circular form. Rainy season, dry season, rainy season again, dry season. Anything that does not conform to the law of circles cannot last. Are you learning now? Let me give the last word and we pray. My time is up. The last area where you must contend to see the power of God manifest in your life in order to find rest roundabout is in the area of quality relationships. Quality relationships. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, we'll read from verse 9 to 12. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. That means those two people should not be lazy. There's, there is labor there for them to profit themselves. If one fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe unto him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Verse 12. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. The Bible says a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. Relationships are very, very important if you must excel. It says, he that walketh with the wise men shall be wise. So you don't have to be wise yet. You just follow them. Are we together? Here he tells us that wisdom is communicable. You can, the same way you come close to someone and say there are airborne diseases and all of that, he's saying wisdom is communicable. And he says, but the companion of fools, please keep the scripture, shall be destroyed. You've heard me say it. If there are five foolish people around you, you did not count well. There are six. If there are five wise people around you, you also did not count well. There are six. You will always be a reflection of the relationships you honor. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4. Let's hurry up. Goodness. Genesis 12. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, thy father's house, to a land that I will show you. Who was God speaking to? Abraham. Is that true? And then he's, he spoke all these blessings upon Abraham. Let's go to verse 3. Verse 3. Genesis now. And I will bless them that bless you, and curse him that curses you and in thee one man he's speaking to one man shall all the families of the earth be blessed read verse 4 with me if you're a christian ready one to read so abraham departed as the lord has spoken to who him and lot went with him stop god did not speak to lot lot was not part of that project but lord said i didn't hear god but i will follow the man i know had god Are we together? Genesis 13. Very quickly, we're praying now. Genesis 13 from verse 1. <laughs> and Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot again, that's our Lot, Lot with him into the south. Verse 2. Verse 2, very quickly. Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Why? Because that was the natural fruit of obedience. Are we together? Verse 3. And he went on his journey from the south even to Bethel. And to the place where his tent had been from the beginning between Bethel and Hai. Verse 4. And unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And Abraham called upon the name of the Lord. 5. And Lot also which went with Abraham also had flocks. Look at what the Bible is saying. It didn't say, and, and Lord, all he reminds you that the basis for his blessing was his relationship. And Lord also, he would have just said, and Lord had flocks. He said, no, Lord also, who took the risk to see value in relationships. He had flocks and herds. You are as wealthy as your relationships. I've prayed for my people time and again that may you never be so poor that all you have is money. Amen. 
13 verse 6. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. Why? For their substance was great so that they could not do it. Now, you don't even know who God spoke to and who followed because their results now were Yes, sir. These are the mysteries of the kingdom. Verse 7. Unfortunately, there was a strife between the headsmen of Abraham and the headsmen of Lot. Unfortunately, for sake of time, you would read that Abraham, knowing that the blessing was on him, he said, Lot, choose anywhere. Because it's not your location, it's what is on you. Lot, you are an escort. I am a carrier of something. I give you the benefit of doubt. Choose anywhere. Foolish Lot would have said, I know why God blessed me. It's not because I had God directly. It is my remaining with you that is the basis of my blessing. But the Bible says, listen, the first decision Lot will make outside the influence of abraham landed him to stay near sodom that means the result of lot was not a measure of his wisdom it was a measure of the strength of his relationships by the time abraham would come to rescue lot his decisions kept progressing him till he was in the middle of sodom can i tell you this be fruitful means be relational. Everything multiplies on the basis of relationships. It takes a man and his wife to have children. That already should teach you that nothing multiplies in isolation. This is the year where you become intentional about quality destiny relationships. Don't say we grew up in the same place. Love everybody. But you must select relationships that reflect where God is taking you. There are people whose, whose refusal to be transformed will sooner or later become a source of, of, of impedance to your advancement. And you should love them and say, well, my passion for God, it doesn't look like you are motivated by the same passion. And we can't be unequally yoked. I love you, but we may not be able to continue this journey together. Are we together? These six areas, if and when you allow the grace of God and the word of God to find expression, you will be surprised that you will look left and right and you would see that God would have sorted you roundabout. A final recap, your spiritual life, sustaining superior belief systems through mental transformation, your health and your wellness, your purpose and your destiny, your finances, your relationships. Show me a man who excels in all this area and I show you one who has personified what it means to find rest round about. Please rise up on your feet and let's pray.